Hey all, it's Nim or Nimicry if you're feeling professional and welcome to the YouTube video. Now today I'm gonna gush about World of Warcraft and more specifically the Emerald Dream. It's a new zone in 10.2. This is as close to a verdant paradise as you could get. Imagine if no civilization other than some small druid enclaves existed on Azeroth. And that's the Emerald Dream. The closest in-game you can get to it is Val Shura. If you're, if you're not a druid, uh, or if you beat the Emerald Nightmare Raid, you can finish in the Emerald Dream. Or if you're a druid, you can actually visit the Emerald Dream, but it's not quite as comprehensive as this. And I don't know if there's a lore reason for that. I'm sure someone in the comments who's a lore master will tell me exactly why. Uh, and even if it's speculation, that's fine. I like to learn things. But I want you to guys to take a look at this. This zone is one of the truly beautiful parts of Azeroth. I, normally, when I think of beauty in Azeroth, I think of Winter Spring. I love Winter Spring. It's a great place. But this is on a whole nother level. It's almost like I'm stepping into, you know, through the looking glass with Alice in Wonderland. Everything is done on a gargantuan, or to use the parlance of the, of, of the more recent movies, muchness. The scale here is insane. I mean, they, they talk about a world tree. You know, Taladrasil was big, but Amidrasil, where I'm flying now, seems so much more grandiose. And odds are it's probably similar, but still, it's something to think about. And then, of course, you have this whole area. Look at how big this map is. And this is just a zone where there's some world quests and a raid and a, a story, and it's, it's wonderful. I honestly think this is one of the best zones they've ever created. And in addition, because it's not a expansion starting zone, you know, the, the four or five zones you get at the start of the expansion, I think it deserves even more praise. Because let's take a look back through some of the other zones that were added in patches. So let's look at, uh, you know, Mechagon and Najatar, right? Mechagon and Najatar. I liked Mechagon, and I liked Najatar. I liked Najatar when I could fly, uh, and Mechagon was really cool, but I liked the tinkering stuff. Then, of course, there's, you know, Corthia in the Shadowlands. Argus in Legion. Both are pretty good. I liked Argus more than Corthia. Uh, and, of course, they had, their, they had you know, raids and access to dailies and reputation and extra gear. And it's, it's good, but I don't think that they were strikingly pretty. Even Argus in its desolation, I don't think it was, for lack of a better phrase, beautiful desolation. I think it was good. But I don't, it, I, it lacked this grandiose perfection of form and function that the natural world and the end world dream has. You know, we go a little earlier than that. We have uh, the Isle of Thunder. Fantastic. And I do mean absolutely fantastic. So I want to I wanna throw that out there because there was, not only was it a daily area, not only was there a raid, but you had that really cool uh, side mission or little little side activity, the Thunder King's Trove, where it was a really cool little PvE puzzle and you could get some rewards. It was fantastic. And before that even, we had the Isle of Keldanas, which introduced the concept of dailies, catch-up gear, and progressive unlock of zone. I mean, that was one patch. So... Putting all of that up against each other, right? All of that. How does the Emerald Dream stack up? Honestly, I'm, I'm putting it up there near the top. I might say that, you know, for sheer functionality, the Isle of Keldanos is probably the best zone that's been added because so many new ideas came with it. But if, if we decouple Keldanos from having sole possess possession of those ideas then basically every, then it falls significantly. The Emerald Dream for me is one of the most beautiful areas in World of Warcraft. It, it, I, I, if I wanted to look at art, this show like, oh, video games can't be art. What do you say about this? This, this is art to me. It's fantastic. And I'm, I'm more a paladin aesthetic. I love the chapel, the light, and all, all that, but I can appreciate the raw, wild beauty of this place. So honestly, guys, I think this is one of the best zones that has ever been made in the game. Now, let's talk a little bit about the questing and the story and the activities because a zone isn't just something that you need to do 
that you just you just fly in or you walk in, you have to do stuff in it. So obviously there's a storyline through here. It involves eventually unlocking all of the Emerald Dream and uh, unlocking, discovering essentially, and then going back to Amidrasil. And once the raid unlocks, you'll be given a quest to go into the raid, stop Frack, and hopefully progress the story. There'll be other cinematics and things out about that. We'll do videos on that later. Then, of course, you have your world quests, which generally involve killing stuff, collecting stuff, planting things. But there are a couple of dynamic events that I want to draw attention to while I'm here. If you, if, if we look here, you'll see that there is... Oh, somebody planted it. Or no, nobody, nobody planted it. Okay. You can plant seeds and donate to your seed and others in order to grow flowers, dream blooms, and get rewards up into including a couple amounts and a real i got a really good alchemy recipe from it uh for a healing potion and there's meant there are three different types of seeds you've got your your you know rare you've got your your uncommon your rare and your epic right and that's and you can donate different things to everything to to each each one of the seeds and you pick up your donation materials through doing the easiest way through doing the other thing which is the super bloom it's a event that I believe happens every 45 minutes. And you get a quest for it. You do it once a week. Gives you a big chunk of reward. And you get a bunch of donation materials, which will then help you along with your quest and getting rep and doing other things. What I'm saying is that the design of it is almost a perfect circle. No player effort is wasted up to a certain point. Now, once you do your dailies and weeklies and things like that and if you still just want to play around you can but you're not your gains are going to be much much slower so what it is is that it respects the player's time there is a finite endpoint, and most people are going to grind hard especially with their rating until they get to let's see if i remember correctly i think it is 18 yes you get the uh you can get you can uh, 18 if i talk to the quartermaster it should show so we go over here where are you? The Dreambound Augment Rune. You gotta be rank rank 18 and renowned to get that. That's the permanent rune for uh, Dragonflight. So if you can you can end up getting that, everyone will be very, very happy. Of course, because that's a permanent buff that you can put on and on. And, well, it's not a big buff. If everybody in your raid has it, it can do a little bit of damage. So ultimately, though, if you don't want to force it and try to grind as hard as you can, you will have an endpoint that respects your time so there's no real mandatory logging in every day because while you might get a little bit of smattering of renown from doing the world quests it's not going to be anywhere near as much as when you when you get complete your your weekly objectives and since the raid isn't even out yet you don't have to worry about grinding things and no lifing it honestly i think in this case take the zone as the druids would intend you to take the zone in the natural way Time will flow. Time will progress. Remember, a small stream cut the Grand Canyon. It just took a long time and all in its proper course. And of course, if you want to be faster, you can grind it out. I'm not saying not to do that, but just don't feel it's necessary to absolutely just, oh my god, I've got to hammer everything right now because if I don't do it, I'm going to be behind and then it's going to be bad. It's like, no, what are you really missing out on? Let's... Let's actually look at what you could really be missing out on. Obviously, there's some gear you can get. I got this bow from there. I upgraded it a few times, and now it was much better than the weapon I had before. Okay, so that, that's something there. And some you can get some other gear, too, which is fine. You can go up to 450. But if it can go up to 450, right, let's take a look here at our raid content. Let's just go to normal raids. I'm right? We'll go to normal. We go to our loot. 463. 460, 460, 460, uh, 457, 454, 460. You know, I'm just throwing stuff out there. And and what I, what I mean by that is that it's not that big a jump to where if you get something from, from the raid, it's going to be better than what you could have spent all this time grinding for. And if you get something here, you'll get an upgrade from the raid, so it might help you there, but it's, but it's not mandatory. Like, I'm going to be fine going into the raid on normal. And then I'll, once I gear up in normal, then I'll go into heroic. And once I gear up on heroic, I might do a little bit of mythic, depending on how my class schedule works out. 
So the bottom line is enjoy the zone and don't feel pressured to burn yourself out because too many people do that and then they're like, oh, I'm not having fun. Well, yeah, that's because you literally are like, okay, you're forcing yourself to grind through something that doesn't really matter in the end. And of course, you see right here, 441 gauntlets for what? 300 resources? It's nothing. Now, the stats aren't that great, but, you know, whatever. What are you going to do? I can go through here, and you got ensembles. And you know why they give you those gauntlets early? Why they let you upgrade them early? Is because that's a tier slot. Well, guess what? You get a, a charge of Catalyst soon. There's one piece. Then you pick up one for the raid. There's two. Congratulations. First week, you might have your two-piece. And that makes people happy. So honestly, Emerald Dream, you are a fantastic zone. I love it. I hope to see more zones like this. So guys, tell me what you think about my video about the zone below in the comments. Of course, it helps out a great deal because of the fact that, uh, you know, YouTube doesn't always like positive WoW videos. And I try to make stuff not overly critical unless I need to be. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, please, you know, again, like, comment, subscribe. And may the mount that you're farming drop on the first instance of you running the content that it drops in. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and have a good day.